Hello everyone, how are you? It's been a while again. Here I am with a new PC, a new camera, and a new mic. So I am ready to go and excited to talk to you about supplements for Peyronie's disease. So it's an exciting time to talk about supplements for Peyronie's because last year we had four papers by the Italian Peyronie's specialist, Johnny Paulis, and he published these papers on eight men who had complete remission of Peyronie's symptoms verified by ultrasound using supplements. Half of the men did have pentoxifiline injections, but half of them only took these supplements and had complete resolution. And there are before and after pictures and everything. It's quite interesting. Um, I wanna go over with you what supplements he used and the dosages. So if you wanna do that, you can do that. Now, I also wanna go over the main supplements for Peyronie's and then also over supplements I think that are possibly even more beneficial than those supplements. So um, I will let you know about those. Now, I do have an announcement. My Peyronie's guide is available now at neomanportal.com. What this is, is basically everything I know about Peyronie's in one place and all of the research put in one place in a way that's easy to understand. So many of you know I, I can't run um, advertisements on this channel because of the nature of the content and I don't really have anything to support myself besides Patreon, um, you know, a small number of patrons, which uh, I thank you for that. But I think this is probably the best solution for me. It's something I like to do and I like compiling data. This is something I started a long time ago and I kind of thought about my nephew a lot making this and I am thinking about him as I'm kind of improving this because I know my nephew might end up with Peyronie's and I want him to have everything updated right there. This is not a membership. I don't like the idea of memberships, having to see on your credit card something you're paying for every month. This is a guide you just buy and then you have for as long as I can keep the thing available. And I will be updating it monthly um, as often as possible and as long as there's new information on Peyronie's for years to come, really as long as I can. And there's a lot to, to put into it. So it, uh, it kind of is a rough draft. So please know that it's kind of an info dump. It's a lot of information all there and you can also message me through the neoman portal if you buy the guide so maybe i'll see you on the other side feel free to tell me what you want to uh, what you want me to add to it and if you just want to send me questions uh, feel free to message me through there so if you want to support the channel please consider the guide and i thank you so much for that and even if one person gets it that will really motivate me to make it better and kind of um, flesh it out so again, it's a rough draft, but everything is there. I think you'll find it very useful. Certain things I'll be adding later, information on shockwave implants and things like that. In this video though, I wanna talk about supplements. And I have tried to make this video multiple times and it's always over an hour long. And I don't wanna do that because I tend to ramble a lot. And I want to tell you my ultimate opinion, kind of um, just so you can make your own choice as to what to do. Now, there's a lot of supplements that aren't worth taking for Peyronie's disease. One of those is vitamin E. I do not think that one's worth taking. It was the first supplement studied for Peyronie's in something like 1948, really ancient history. It was studied by Johnny Paulis when he added it to other treatments and he saw an additional 12% reduction in curvature, which I think is definitely significant. But I think that given that there are so many supplements one could take, for Peyronie's disease, E is probably not worth it. And vitamin E also may be, um, well, it seems to be associated with prostate cancer. At least some research does show that. Some research papers show the opposite, but until the verdict is kind of out, I don't really feel good about taking vitamin E. And I would say there are just better options. There are also supplements that help your body use vitamin E better, including coenzyme Q10 and pine bark extract, also known as pycnogenol or trademarked as pycnogenol. So the other thing is there's a lot of vitamin E in olive oil. Um, I just don't really think it's worth taking. So that's it for vitamin E. Now the next supplement studied for Peyronie's was propolis. And not many people know this because those studies were in Spanish, I believe. And those studies showed, um, from 10 to 22% uh, or so reduction in curvature, just studying propolis. It wasn't added to any other supplements in those studies. 
Now, Johnny Paulis does use propolis in his list of supplements, and I'll share that with you later, but I think propolis, honestly, after all this time, I, I think propolis might be one of the best supplements to take. Now, the reason for that is because I think it's probably the safest, and I, or, uh, you know, as long as you don't have an allergy, I think it's probably the safest. And I also think that propolis has the most angles. Um, so all of these supplements tend to hit the main targets of Peyronie's, which are transforming growth factor beta, TGF beta, uh, TNF alpha, interleukin one, uh, six and eight, and the MMPs, MMP two and nine specifically, and some others. Um, now propolis hits all of these, but also more. So propolis is a B product. It's a kind of like a resin. So you could, you could call it natural and it contains over 300 compounds that are very powerful. One of them being um, a kind of caffeic acid or caffeic acid ester, uh, C-A-P-E, CAPE. And that is a uh, potent HDAC inhibitor. We know that HDAC is a target for Peyronie's <clears throat> and also, uh, propolis contains something called chrysin, and chrysin is a very potent anti-glycolytic, and it does inhibit uh, ages, so advanced glycation end products, and that's something I write about in my guide, and I will be talking about more. Um, according to this uh, type 1 diabetes, uh, excuse me, doctor, Dr. Bernstein, who I have mentioned on this channel, he has said that Peyronie's and Dupuytren's are actually the result of the glycation of collagen. And so if you can actually stop this through anti, using anti-glycolytics, um, of course, diet, you can prevent that from happening from, um, from the ECM extracellular matrix from accumulating. So there's a lot of research on that that I've been doing, and I'll share with you which supplements are good for that later that I'm very excited about, specifically one in particular. But propolis contains um, all these things. And not only that, those two that I mentioned, the HDAC aspect and um, chrysin being an anti-glycolytic, but propolis also hits the immune aspect of Peyronie's disease. So this one study on propolis that showed the 22% reduction in curvature, it actually found that the majority of men with Peyronie's were <clears throat> somehow immunodeficient or had some kind of, kind of immune issue, which is really interesting. And Propolis actually corrected that. Um, it, is a, uh, it is a powerful immunomodulator, and I think uh, that's something to be aware of. So it does have an effect on mast cells. And so it, Propolis itself does seem to have the most kind of wide um, effects, and it definitely has anti-diabetic effects and seems to be just extremely powerful in general. So my opinion is that if you were to take one or two supplements, propolis would probably be one of them. Now, just to tell you now, the dosage of propolis in these studies was 900 milligrams a day, and Johnny Paulis uses 600 a day in his combination of supplements, which I will share with you again shortly here. So propolis, I consider that kind of a god tier supplement at this time. Now, the next supplement that was studied for Peyronie's, I believe the, prop, the correct order is actually acetyl L-carnitine. Now, I used to be a big fan of acetyl L-carnitine and um, the study on it did show a pretty significant result. I'm starting to forget now, it was almost 17 or so degree reduction in curvature just using acetyl L-carnitine. That's abbreviated as L-car. That's a very popular supplement and I do like that supplement. I'll tell you, um, it has a lot of really amazing effects on your nerves. It will regrow nerves. It's a rapid antidepressant, and you can feel your nerves actually growing back in your pelvic area and in your hands. It is powerful. It also does increase nitric oxide, so you might uh, notice harder erections. And it also uh, hits all these targets I've mentioned, transforming growth factor beta and a bunch of these. Now, um, there's only one, well, there's a couple problems with LCAR, and that is that basically it raises TMAO, and TMAO, if you are in the carnivore community, keto community, like I am, you might say, okay, TMAO, TMAO is not a problem, you're not worried about it, and that's fine. If you're not worried about it, that's okay. 
there was a recent paper this year or last year that showed that when uh, I believe type 2 diabetics took LCAR, there was worth worsening of um, arterial plaque, um, some kind of a heart, uh, basically heart attack risk. And the conclusion of that paper was that if you have diabetes or you think you might be at risk for heart disease, you would want to avoid supplementing with carnitine or acetyl-L-carnitine. So I'll leave that up to you, and I will be doing more research on that, making more videos on carnitine, and putting more information on that in my guide. Kind of like vitamin E, we need a definitive answer on that. And again, there are so many options as to what supplements you can take. I simply don't think LCAR is, is really necessary, um, but it is certainly worth, worth trying. Um, the other issue is that it will make your urine and uh, breath smell very fishy, and that's not too pleasant. So that's it for <coughs> LCAR. Um, the dosage, by the way, for LCAR is, I believe, one gram twice a day. But because I don't take LCAR anymore, I am forgetting that. So I'll open up my guide here and screen share with you for a second while I quickly check for you. Okay, that's Paulisa's stuff. Excuse me, guys. Looks like this is the wrong doc. Okay, here we go. Okay. Let's go down here. It is indeed one gram twice a day. So, all right, don't need to screen share again right now. Okay, I'll stop that now. Yeah, so one gram um, twice a day, and if my memory serves me correctly, Paulis uses one gram of L-carnitine uh, once a day. So that's the difference there. Um, I will make sure to check that later, though. So, okay, that's L-car. Um, now, again, if you have pelvic pain, penile pain, L-car might be a really good choice for you. If you have numbness, like many men with Peyronie's do, in your hands, feet, and pelvic area and penis, you might want to try L-car. That said, I have better solutions for, for um, neuropathy, that is numbness, tingling, and pain in your penis, pelvic area, hands, and feet, or face. I have better supplements that you can try for that, specifically one in particular. <coughs> so I would say, basically, based on the history of, of the science, the research, propolis is the one to take right now. Um, and the next, which is probably the most powerful, is coenzyme Q10. A lot of you have heard of that, have tried it. The dosage is 300 milligrams a day. Now, the study on coenzyme Q10, as many people know, is the most impressive study on any supplement and Peyronie's disease. So CoQ10 is kind of the god tier supplement along with Propolis, I would say. Now, the thing is, is that the study on CoQ10 was not retracted, but the author, his name is Safar, Safarinajad, an Iranian um, researcher or urologist, he has had many papers retracted and many uh, notices of concern. So I don't know why that is. It seems that something with the way he collected data was somehow problematic, but we don't know exactly why. But many of his papers have been retracted and we have been kind of waiting, you know, when is the CoQ10 paper going to be retracted? It was a 2010 paper it showed a whopping 50% or even higher reduction in curvature for just by using coenzyme Q10, CoQ10. That is crazy. The only thing besides CoQ10 that has been shown to reduce curvature that much, uh, besides surgery um, <clears throat> or Zyaflex or, any, or PRP, would be traction. So traction has been shown to result in up to 50 or so percent reduction in curvature, some cases higher. Um, the same with PRP um, and Zyaflex and some injections in some case in some cases. But as far as supplements go, usually we're looking at 14, 17, maybe 20 or so percent reduction in curvature. 50% uh, is unheard of. So coenzyme Q10, um, that's amazing if that's true. And I will say that that study was done in 2010. So there's not too much to, I don't know, um, it has not received an expression of concern at this point. Maybe it's good, guys. And I, I would say there's other rationale, though, for coenzyme Q10. As I have mentioned, it's very intimately tied to fatty acid oxidization. It's been shown to lower blood sugar and insulin levels in women with polycystic ovar uh, ovarian syndrome, 
And that uh, PCOS does have the same molecular targets as Peyronie's disease, the same kind of fibrotic um, response where you see TGF beta and all these inflammatory markers. Now, coenzyme Q10 has been shown to be effective in treating PCOS. So sometimes I do consider Peyronie's to be the male version of PCOS as PCOS is a result of insulin resistance in certain genetics. In Peyronie's disease, we also know as of just last year, I've said it on this channel many times, but just last year there was a study that showed that <clears throat> Peyronie's was strongly associated with insulin resistance. So I think coenzyme Q10 has very high rationale. There was also a very interesting 2019 case report on a man who had Dupuytren's contracture, that scarring of the hand that many men with Peyronie's also uh, often have on the pinky usually. A man um, in this case report was taking coenzyme Q10 for something else, maybe heart issues. And the case report found that his hands returned to almost normal by taking coenzyme Q10. So that is very cool. Um, I think it's just probably, yeah, better than propolis maybe even. The only thing, or there's a couple things with coenzyme Q10. One is that it could make you hypoglycemic. There's at least one case report of a woman getting autoimmune, um, not diabetes, but autoimmune insulin syndrome from taking coenzyme Q10. This is one person. I would not worry about that. It also corrected itself um, in the, um, after she stopped taking it. Lots of people have taken coenzyme Q10. People have um, been studied for 10 years taking it, showing no problems, only benefit. And the one thing that has always bothered me though about coenzyme Q10 is possible downregulation. This is something I've been looking into for a long time. There's only one study I can find on this that showed that when rats took coenzyme Q10, when they were um, given coenzyme Q10 and they stopped, their coenzyme Q10 levels went below baseline. Coenzyme Q10 is, a, is something your body produces. And so when you mess with that, <clears throat> like it showed in this study, um, Coenzyme Q10 in the rat's hearts went below baseline for two weeks or so before getting back to baseline. And so I would say that's not something to worry about, but if you're hyper risk averse um, like I am and you're just so worried about it, you know, just take propolis and um, some of these others I'm going to mention. But I do think that honestly, um, if there was a big problem with down regulation, I believe we would know it by now. In humans, I think coenzyme Q10 is amazing and probably one of the best supplements you could possibly take for Peyronie's disease and fibrosis in general. So again, that's 300 milligrams a day or 100 milligrams a day if you're going to combine it with other supplements like Johnny Pauli's does. So I'll share that list with you soon. So, so um, propolis and coenzyme Q10, I think you want to just, honestly, you probably want to take those. Um, after that, I would say if you're going to add one thing, it might be pine bark extract. And pine bark extract, not many people know, but it has been studied for Peyronie's disease. It's just that the study was called um, penile caloidal scarring or something like this. And it was combined with go-to cola. I don't recommend go-to cola because it can cause liver damage. Um, but pine bark extract has a lot of rationale, a ton of research on it for suppressing all these inflammatory markers as well as preventing fibrosis as well. And I have a bunch written on that in my guide. And maybe I'll make a separate video just on pine bark uh, in the future because I love it for its effects on anti-swelling. Um, it actually has helped my pelvic pain. And interestingly, it was studied on pelvic pain um, not too long ago, maybe a year ago, and it did show benefits when combined with, I believe, hemp seed or something like this. But pine bark extract, extract, it is the only supplement that I know of that has shown benefit at reducing spider veins. Uh, there was one study on women, pregnant women who had uh, spider veins, and it was shown to reduce those. And it's also probably the best research supplement for lymphatic issues and lymphatic swelling. Some of the research on pine bark and swelling in the legs um, 
is very, very impressive. So uh, again, that's in the guide, but I'll probably share that with you again in the future. But uh, I personally have hated swelling in my penis. It's bothered me so much after my vacuum device incident that I, would, I really ended up liking pine bark. And pine bark extract is also very good at increasing nitric oxide levels and getting, giving you a harder erection. So if you don't want to take arginine or citrulin or Cialis for erections, consider pine bark extract. Uh, I do like that one a lot. It's antifibrotic and it's kind of similar to bilberry. And bilberry is a supplement that Johnny Paolisi uses. It's a source of proanthocyanidins, just like pine bark. They're different, but very similar. Um, so I'd say just a simple strategy for you based on high rationale would be coenzyme Q10, propolis, and pine bark extract. And that's it. If you want to try Alcar, you can. Now, okay, that's really it for the main supplements that I think are worth taking based on high research. Um, I want to tell you what supplements I think are the best, which are a little bit different. But first, let's just do screen share again, and I can just go over my guide a little bit with you guys and <clears throat> give you some answers here really quickly. Now, I do want to make this clear that there are some supplements not worth, worth taking. And just because of the liver damage and low benefit here, you can see uh, colchicine, 14%, potaba, 9%, um, omega-3, I believe the paper was even uh, retracted. Here's another one, <clears throat> which I can't pronounce, 16%, but there's just not enough information on a lot of these. And again, there's too many supplements to take. I wouldn't worry about those right now. Now, I'm going to show you Johnny Paulice's list. Let me make sure you can see uh, my screen here. And you can. Um, so here is Johnny Paulice's list. This is what he used and uses to achieve uh, quote unquote complete remission of Peyronie's, verified by ultrasound. Propolis 600 milligrams a day, carnitine, that's L carnitine, not L car, one gram a day. Bilberry 160 milligrams. Now you might be surprised to see Silly Marin, that's milk thistle, ginkgo biloba, kind of surprising. There's vitamin E. Coenzyme Q10, 100, Boswellia, 200, vitamin C, very small amount. I don't know why that's there. It's part of a product. Um, and also later he added um, SOD, superoxide dismutase, which is very powerful and has been used in cream form um, for Peyronie's disease. Some people have tried SOD. It's very powerful. That's also an endogenous antioxidant. So, and I believe that it, that actually raises and goes up on a ketogenic diet. So, um it's kind of interesting, right? Now, one of the good things about this list is that Silly Marin and Ginkgo Biloba are very cheap, I believe, and they are antifibrotic. Um, you might know of Silly Marin because you've heard about milk thistle being a very good for the liver and liver fibrosis. Um, I will say that out of this list, Ginkgo, I would say be careful of side effects, potentially, but generally safe. Boswellia, the only side effect I know on that is some kind of um, maybe stomach issues, but otherwise everything looks very reasonable to me. Um, you certainly don't have to take all of these, but you know, uh, at the end of the day, you do have to think about your wallet. What do you, what do you really want to spend money on every few months, every three months? What are you buying? You know, I'd say one of the most frustrating and painful things about Peyronie's again is monthly or just, just the, the expenses. Um, it's not fun to have to buy all this stuff. And that's not even covering basic supplements. I haven't talked about vitamin D, magnesium, and zinc, which I think are worth taking possibly before all these, um, which um, there are reasons for that I will go over in a different video. But vitamin D, zinc, and magnesium are critical for preventing fibrosis, um, especially in Peyronie's disease, especially vitamin D, but zinc possibly even more so. Zinc is really, really incredible for its antifibrotic effects. So again, this is his list here. I would say uh, you could focus on just which one is cheapest and then maybe um, take more of propolis or something. Take 900 milligrams of propolis um, and then maybe just bilberry or something. I'd say, again, whatever is um, most simple for you, try not to be too stressed out about what you take. It seems that 
basically any antioxidant at this point or any anything that hits the molecular targets seems to work but if you want to follow the high rationale high rationale i'd say just propolis and coq10 and you would probably be good maybe uh, yeah maybe pine bark so that's his list now closing that here um, I want to just, let's see, how long is this video now? Um, I'm not going to worry about it. So again, I don't want to go too long. I want to give you the answers and move on here. So, all right. I've already kind of told you my opinion. Um, now, there are other supplements I like even better uh, than the ones I listed. And I kind of found them kind of by accident. Now, I think they have very high rationale. I'm just going to list them here really quick. And the first one is the one I'm most excited about and I think is incredible and almost life-changing. And I, I have uh, written quite a bit about it and I will probably make other videos on it specifically for neuropathy. It blocks advanced glycation end products, as I've mentioned, and that is benfotiamine. Now, you may have heard of benfotiamine. It is basically thiamine. It's a form of thiamine that is synthetically created. Uh, it was made uh, by Japanese uh, in Japan. So it is called ben benfotiamine. It should be benfothiamine. I believe it was mispronounced or misspelled because in Japanese, it, uh, thiamine is chiamine. But basically, benfotiamine has been almost life-changing for me, um, for my neuropathy. Uh, within 15 minutes of taking it, I, my hands are quick, my my nerves are quick, my pelvic area and penis feel normal. I will say it blows everything I've tried out of the water for pelvic pain, for nerve pain, for general you know feeling more awake, because um, it's been studied for many brain disorders, Alzheimer's. It's very promising. It does show benefits for Alzheimer's, Parkinson's. And it's being studied in the, in the bond trial right now for type two diabetics and neuropathy. It is extremely powerful. And you take that at 300 milligrams a day, possibly twice a day. Now, besides just helping with my neuropathy, um, now you shouldn't take that lightly. I think um, anything that helps neuropathy is really good for Peyronie's disease because ED itself and fibrosis they do have a neurogenic aspect, and that's something I'll be talking about in the future. But just to kind of forget about that point for a bit, the reason why benfotiamine is so powerful is that it directly allows your mitochondria to use sugar. So you could actually have, a, like I could eat a piece of cake, and if I take benfotiamine with it, I won't notice any burning in my hands. It's actually that incredible. And it almost feels like my body is like absorbing the sugars. I can feel myself almost kind of like sucking things in as strange as that sounds. I'm like, oh my God. And I've been with my friends and loved ones and they've seen me after taking 300 milligrams in 15 minutes. I'm like, guys, I'm here. I'm actually here with you. It is life changing. So if you have pelvic pain, I, 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 I highly urge you to try benfotiamine. It's not too expensive. If you can't afford it, you could also just take vitamin B1, which is thiamine. And it would be pretty much the same thing. Just make sure you take a high enough dosage. You might want a mega dose. For benfotiamine, I actually only take it on weekends now because it's so powerful that it lasts all throughout the week, if not longer. I find that I'm able to drink alcohol if I want to. I, I'm not drinking now, and I don't recommend you drink alcohol, but benfotiamine has helped me just... Um, deal with a lot of metabolic damage. So uh, enough of just praising it, but basically what it does is it blocks ages, advanced glycation end products, and it has been shown um, to have an effect on fibrosis because of this. And basically, specifically, it has been studied and shown to reduce glucose-induced induced tissue damage and glucose-induced fibrosis. So this is a very big deal. And for me, this is probably the best supplement I've ever taken in my life. And it makes my penis feel great. It's, you know, I want to say that it's helped make my penis feel more stable and more sensitive during sex and really feel like, wow, like my penis is back. Uh, you know, the only way for me to have my penis feel this good without benfotiamine has been fasting. 
and a, ke a ketogenic diet, but this is a whole other level. So, okay, I want to talk about benfotiamine more. I want to talk about the studies. Um, but for now, I will talk more about that in the future. Check out my guide if you want to look at some of those links, some of those uh, studies. And moving on to some other ones. So the other supplements I think that might be, you know, the next kind of level Peyronie's treatment someday are similar, well, similar to benfotiamine, only in that they do, um, they are anti-glycolytics. They do block ages. And this is taurine and carnosine. Now, people have been talking about taurine a lot lately due to a recent longevity study, but the reason I'm bringing up taurine is because it is extremely um, effective at treating diabetes, and it's going to be getting more and more attention uh, as the years go on. So it's kind of, um, kind of a new thing in diabetes as far as research goes. Not only that, but it does block ages, and so does carnosine. You could also take zinc carnosine, but carnosine itself is a very, very powerful anti-glycolytic, and it does it has also been shown to reduce glucose-induced fibrosis. So as far as taurine goes, usually people take a gram a day or so. Carnosine, I'm not sure what's ideal yet. Um, I think I, I'm still kind of looking into that, and I'm not sure if I think it's worth taking yet. At this point, because there's a lot of supplements that cost a lot of money, I would say you really just want to, again, propolis, coenzyme Q10. If you have pelvic pain, sensitivity issues, benfotiamine, okay? Taurine now, taurine is quite affordable. It's quite cheap. So I will say if you want to take something powerful that's cheap, it would be taurine. Now, those are the three I wanted to tell you about that I think are really powerful, but there are more. Um, something like e EGCG. EGCG is something I'll have to talk about in another video, but it binds to MMP2 and MMP9 and uh, blocks TGF beta. It also regenerates nerves. So one thing I will be talking about and writing about is that what I do like to do is fast in the morning. I'm fasting right now and it's 5 p.m. I haven't eaten at all. Uh, I've only taken benfotiamine and sipped matcha, matcha tea, green tea, for the EGCG that's, that it contains. And EGCG makes my nerves burn because it's regenerating them so quickly and so effectively. It makes my penis feel amazing and it makes stretching and heating and everything just feel great. It makes sex feel better for me and it's a big, big deal. EGCG is extremely powerful. Um, it does block fibrosis. So I will be sharing more data on EGCG in the future, but I, if you have neuropathy, I do recommend you try this method. Be careful if you fast, do your own research, but um, I do recommend fasting, sipping matcha, and taking benfotiamine. It has been life-changing for me. Um, now, after EGCG, there are many other supplements you could take, including berberine. Berberine is definitely worth talking about. A lot of people are talking about berberine because it's maybe the best supplement for uh, its anti-diabetic effects, although I will say that it's, because it's a plant, it may have some unnatural effects, possibly, I don't know, I, I haven't looked into berberine that much, but when I looked into it, I thought, I don't think I'm going to take this, I would rather just do keto fast and take the supplements I mentioned to you, but that said, I, I'm very interested in berberine, I will probably take it, research it, and um, I do actually have some links in my in my guide on berberine, it has been shown to reduce fibrosis, and it could be one of the best supplements for Peyronie's uh, someday. You know, you never know. Um, there are other supplements as well. Um, many, resveratrol, um, sulforaphane, you know. But I think, again, we're, it's just getting to be too much at a certain point. So I like to separate them, as I have in my guide, where there's the main supplements based on research. And then there are the anti-glycolytics that also have that neuropathy um, benefit. And um, that's how I kind of lump them in my mind. So that is it. I think I managed to finish this video in less than an hour. <laughs> um, yeah, it looks like it's been a half hour. So that, that is awesome. So I'm sorry if it seemed to rush, guys. Uh, rushed, guys. I, uh, I, again, I'm very nervous to be recording again. And I didn't have a computer or any way. I didn't have a computer that could record 
until now. And I invested in a really good PC, really good camera and um, nice mic. So I'm ready to start talking about this stuff a little just more open with you guys again, hopefully. Um, as for the guide, again, anybody who gets it, thank you so much. And again, if one person gets it, I look forward to your messages. If you don't message me, that's fine. I'm going to be working on this for a long time. Let me know what I can add to it. Um, it needs it needs a lot, but I again, I do think you'll find it useful. So please comment. Let me know how you're doing. Let me know how you like these supplements, what you think. And if you have any questions and if you want me to um, cover any specific supplements, because there's, there's a lot you could take. That's it. Sorry if I rushed through this, guys. Um, I'll, I'll try to get back in the hang of this and maybe start talking about just stuff that's just on my mind again, about sex or um, your insecurities or a ton of things. So until next time, guys, thank you so much. Take care.